Peace, royal family, Hotep and Amara. Let us begin our lesson and clear up the confusion on who is who in ancient Libya and debunk the lies once and for all. And for the primary source on the tribes of ancient Libya, we will start here in Herodotus the Histories, translated by A.D. Gali, Book 4, Chapter 197. And he says in quote, these are all the Libyans whom we can name, four nations and no more as far as we know inhabited, two of which are aboriginal and two not. The Libyans in the north and the Ethiopians in the south of Libya are aboriginal. The Phoenicians and Greeks are later settlers. According so the accusation here is that Herodotus says, that these are all the Libyans whom we can name, four nations and no more, as far as we know, inhabited, two of which are Aboriginal and two not. The Libyans in the north and the Ethiopians in the south of Libya are Aboriginal. The Phoenicians and Greeks are later settlers. Now, we have to go to the original sources. And it says here, such are the Libyans whose names I have been able to mention, and most of these neither now nor at the time paid any regard to the king of Medes. But I have still this much to say about this country, that four distinct races inhabit it, and no more, as far as we know. Two of these races are indigenous and two not the libyans and ethiopians are indigenous the one inhabiting the northern the other southern parts of libya but the phoenicians and greeks are foreigners no part of libya appears to me so good in fertility as to be compared with asia or europe now, before we go on, I want to specify that when he says Libya, the country, he's talking about a specific region, and he is not mentioning Ethiopia in part of it, and I will show evidence of this, and he's also not mentioning Egypt as part of it. He's mentioning North Africa, and as you can see, in North Africa, he says there are four races. There's Ethiopians, there's Libyans, there's greeks and then there's phoenicians and clearly greeks and phoenicians would have been similar in countenance and so when he says races he doesn't necessarily mean that these nations don't look alike into the source we just read herodotus states four nations inhabited libya the indigenous libyans to the north the indigenous ethiopians to the south and Phoenician and Greek foreigners. I mean, I hate to be the guy who says this, but he did not say four nations inhabited. He said four different races inhabited, and that these races are different than one another. But we will focus on one nation who inhabited the interior part of Libya, known to Herodotus as the Armenians. And the Armenians dwelt in the land known today as the Siwa Oasis. And the question that has to be answered is, were the Armenians Libyans or Ethiopians? And to answer that question, we will go here to Herodotus the Histories, translated by G.C. Macaulay, Book 4, Chapter 181. And it says in quote, Thus then have been mentioned those nomad Libyans who live along the sea coast, and above these inland is the region of Libya. First, at a distance of ten days' journey from Thebes, are the Almunians, whose temple is derived from that of Theban Zeus. Based on the passage we just read, Herodotus states the ancestors and temple of the Almunians originated from Thebes in Egypt. But Herodotus has more to say on the origins of the Armenians, and it is found here in Herodotus, the Histories, Book 2, Chapter 42, 
and he says in quote, the Ammonians do so also after their example, being settlers from both the Egyptians and from the Ethiopians. In one of the greatest self debunks ever, clearly close to Egypt are the Ammonians who are both Egyptian and Ethiopian. And so it is not true that the Libyans that occupy the northern areas have no Ethiopian people living to the north. This, again, is easy to state because if you look at the original, it says, Egyptians make the image of Jupiter with a ram's face, and from the Egyptians, the Ammonians, who are a colony of Egyptians and Ethiopians, and who speak a language between both, have adopted the same practice. And as I conjecture, the Ammonians from hence derive their name for the Egyptians called Jupiter Ammon. The Thebans then do not sacrifice rams. So you can see here that the Ammonians are in between Ethiopians and Egyptians. And this is right next to the area of Thebes and you can see it's written there Theban district abstain from sheep and sacrifice goats only so this area of ammonia is 100% a mixed colony between Egyptians and Ethiopians so much so that they speak both languages as we just read Herodotus states the Armonians were settlers from both the Egyptians and from the Ethiopians but so that we can get a better understanding of what this text is saying, we are going to show the Greek text of Herodotus book two, chapter 42. And I am going to translate this Greek text into English. And it is found here in the Greek text of Herodotus book two, chapter 42. And it says in quote, Epo di Aegyption Ammonio Iantes T. Aegyption Kai Ethiopian Epoikoi. And when translated to English, it says, in quote, From the Egyptians are the Ammonians, being both Egyptian and Ethiopian colonists. According to my very own accurate Greek to English translation of Herodotus, Book 2, Chapter 42. One nation, the Armenians, migrated from one region, from Thebes in Egypt, and settled in the Siwa Oasis in Libya, and there built the Temple of Amun, and later became two colonies, one Egyptian and one Ethiopian. This part is completely made up. This region is part of Egypt and it is occupied by Ethiopians. Now, the, remember when I told you earlier there's a difference between nations and races? This is where it matters. When they say there's four different types of people in Libya, they were talking about four different races in the Libyan areas. And so now, when he's saying that there's two people occupying, he does not say that Libyans and Ethiopians occupy that region. He says Egyptians and Ethiopians and then he mentions their languages he is not stating their race he's stating their nationhood in that the people of Ethiopia colonized that region ahead with the Egyptians meaning that Egypt and Ethiopia own that region together and they operate it together that's what it says it's, it literally says that the two, that area is colonized by Egyptians and Ethiopians, and they speak both languages. Now, why are we going to call that part of Libya? It's not. And if you can see in this map, clearly Libya is outside of that region. But we will first focus on the Egyptian colony of Armenians that migrated from Thebes and Egypt and settled in the Siwa Oasis. And still answer the question, 
were the Armenians and Siwa Libyans or Ethiopians? Let's continue. To find out if the Armenians who inhabited the Siwa oasis in Libya were Libyans or Ethiopians, we must go here to Herodotus the Histories, Book 2, Chapter 55, and it says in quote, They say that two black doves flew from Thebes in Egypt, and came one of them to Libya. And the dove which went away to the Libyans, they say, bade the Libyans to make an oracle of Amun, and this is also of Zeus. So this will prove instantly the verse that he just read that the Egyptians considered themselves black and not only that, they considered themselves to not be Libyans. But let's read it. It says, my opinion of these things is this. If the Phoenicians did really carry off the woman employed in the temple and sold the one to them into Libya and the other into Greece, this last woman, as I think, was sold to the Thespartians in that part which is now called Helis, but was formerly called Palaeskia, then being reduced to slavery, she erected a temple to Jupiter under an oak that grew there, nothing being more natural than that she who had been an attendant in the temple of Jupiter at Thebes should retain the memory of it wherever she came. And afterwards, when and she said that, and afterwards, when she had learned the Greek language, she instituted an oracle and she said that her sister in Libya had been sold by the same Phoenicians by whom she herself was sold. The woman conjecture were called doves or doves by the Dodonians because they were barbarians and they seemed to them to chatter like birds. But after a time, when the woman spoke intelligently intelligibly to them they present they presently reported that the dove had spoken with a human voice for as long as she used a barbarous language she appeared to them to chatter like a bird for how could a dove speak with a human voice but in saying that the dove was black, they show that the woman was an Egyptian. The manner in which oracles are delivered at the Th at Thebes in Egypt. Clearly here there is a difference being made between Libya and Egypt. And in fact it's been drawn to show that the Egyptians are distinct from the Libyans and so we can see that the people who are being mentioned are Egyptians not Libyans there's more to the story like it says here concerning the two oracles one in Greece the other in Libya the Egyptians give the following account the priests of the Theban Jupiter say that two women employed in the temple were carried away from Thebes by certain Phoenicians and that one of them was discovered to have been sold into Libya and the other to the Greeks and that these two women were the first who established oracles in the nations above mentioned. So you see here the nations that are mentioned are Libya and Greece and they're mentioned as countries that are separate from Egypt. When I inquired how they knew this for certain, they answered that they made diligent search for these women and were never able to find them, but had afterwards but had afterwards heard the account they gave them they gave of them this then is the account i heard from the priests at thebes but the prophetess 
at Dodana say that two black pigeons flew away from Thebes in Egypt, that one of them went to Libya and the other to, to them, that this last sitting perched on an oak tree proclaimed in a human voice that it was fitting an oracle should be erected there to Jupiter and that the people believed this to be a divine message to them and did accordingly. They add that the other pigeon which flew into Lib Libya commanded the Libyans to found the oracle of Amun. This also belongs to Jupiter. The priestess of Dodana, of whom the eldest is named Promenia, the second Timurate, and the youngest Nicarendra, gave this account, and the rest of Dodania's engaged in the service of the Temple of Amun. Now, I want you to think of what's going on here. First of all, the story that's being told here is apocryphal or it's 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 not a first hand account it's not something that um herodotus saw with his own eyes in other words this is a story that's being relayed to him so using this as evidence is kind of eh. but secondly clearly thebes is in egypt and when he says they were carried off from thebes into libya he is making a distinction of Libyans and, of course, Greeks from the Egyptians. According to the source we just read, Herodotus states the Armenians who inhabited the Siwa oasis in Libya were indeed Libyans and not Ethiopians. But also in his book four, chapter 197, when Herodotus mentions the four nations of Libya, he makes no mention of Egyptians, but he only mentions the Libyans, Ethiopians, Phoenicians, and Greeks. So, if Herodotus is saying the Armenians were a colony of Egyptians, but yet he later calls them Libyans, then what does this mean? this part is purely made up we all just read that the ammonians are a colony of egyptians and ethiopians so to say what does it mean when he calls them libyans when did he call them libyans we just read the same thing you read at a more extensive range so which part did he call them libyans he called them egyptians and ethiopians this sort of switchy reel over here is not going to work. And to cement my claim, he says they were taken from the temple of Amun, stolen from the temple of Amun, into Libya. Now, if Ammonia is in Libya, how can you steal them from Libya and send them to Libya? That doesn't make sense. It would have to be he stole them from ammonia libya and sent them to dot 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 libya but he does not make the distinction because libya is not ammonia this clearly means that the egyptian armonians that migrated from egypt to the siwa oasis in libya settled amongst the libyans mixed with the libyans and later became libyans and this is the truth according to Herodotus. But let's continue. Now that we know the Egyptian Armonians who inhabited the Siwa oasis in Libya were indeed the Libyans to the north, we will now focus on the location of this Ethiopian colony of Armonians. And to find out the location of these Ethiopian Armonians, we must go here to Diodorus Siculus. Before we go to Diodorus Siculus, we have to make something very clear. When he said that the Ammonians speak a language 
that is in between the Egyptians and the Ethiopians. Clearly, he's talking that they're in the same place and that there's so much in the same place that they speak the same language. This, trying to separate them as if there's a land of Ethiopian Ammonians that's far away from um, the Libyan Ammonians that's made up. And you can tell because we read it where it says they speak a language in between both, meaning that they're in the same region. Library of History, Book 17, Chapter 50, and it says in quote, Having settled the affairs of Egypt, Alexander went off to the temple of Amun. The land which is sacred to the god Amun is occupied on the south and west by Ethiopians and on the north by Libyans, a nomadic people, and the so-called Nasamunians who reach on into the interior. Sorry, but I have to interrupt again. When people say ancient Greece, a lot of people think all of this stuff happened at the same time. So let's first make a distinction. Um, Herodotus lived in 500 BC, right? Meaning that he's 500 years before Diodorus Siculus, who lived in the first century BC. So this is 500 years later. Keep that in mind. Also, if we read, having settled the affairs of Egypt, Alexander went off to the Temple of Amun, the land which is sacred to the god Amun, is occupied on the south and west by Ethiopians and on the north by the Libyans, a nomadic people. Okay, first of all, if we just read that, clearly he's making a distinction between Libyans, Ethiopians, and Egyptians. Does, now, does this sound like he's saying that the Egyptians and Libyans are the same race? To you if you just think about it clearly he's distinct he's making a distinction a differentiation between ethiopians libyans and uh egyptians egyptians ethiopians and libyans and this is not to say that they're not occupying the same region he clearly says the libyans are nomadic and, the, and they're above but he does not say the ethiopians and egyptians are nomadic they just say he just says they lie on the east and west side of it and since i don't trust this guy it's best we go look at the source ourselves so it says here having settled the affairs of egypt alexandra went off to the temple of a moon most of the rest of it is irrelevant so we're going to skip to the part where it goes Okay, proceeding another hundred furlongs, he passed by the city of Amun. Then, after a journey of one day, he approached the sanctuary. The land where this temple lies is surrounded by sandy desert and waterless waste, destitute of anything good for man. The oasis is fifty furlongs long in length and breadth and is watered by many fine springs so that it is covered with all sorts of trees especially those valued for f their fruit it has a moderate climate like our spring and surrounded as it is by very hot regions alone furnishes to its people a contrasting mildness of temperature it is said that the sanctuary was built by Dionys the Egyptian the land which is sacred to the god is occupied on the south and west by Ethiopians and on the north by the Libyans, a nomadic people, a nomadic people, and the so called Nesimonians who reach on into the interior. All the people of Amun dwell in villages in the midst of their country. There is a fortress secured by triple walls you can see here that we're talking about one region and <laughs> in the midst of this country there is a fortress secured by triple walls and i mean it's only 50 furlongs long we are not talking about an area that is huge to make matters even more harsh is that the ethiopians that were there during herodotus time remember 500 years ago 
seem to have completely taken over the land since they are not being you know there's no distinction for Theodorus Siculus between the Ethiopians and Egyptians he seems to just say the Ethiopians live in that region and then the Libyans live in the north whereas you can see that the Herodotus guy said that they were both at one time now is it possible that these Ethiopians are the mix of the Egyptians and whatever Egyptians and Ethiopians the answer is yes they clearly are if you go by what Herodotus said or they were just replaced by other Ethiopians and then Libyans came and whatever but at the, but if you if you just read the story through clearly there's nothing here that would give an indicator that the people who live in ammonia are not Ethiopians now let's say that the Ethiopians are Libyans meaning that they are not the same race as the Ethiopians that there are white people who are e whatever so if they mixed with the e with the Ethiopians why is it that there are Ethiopian in the time of Diodorus Siculus why why isn't that race completely evacuated since they're in a region that is Egyptian according to Diodorus Siculus book 17 chapter 50 the Ethiopians in the land sacred to the god Amun or the Ethiopian Armunians dwelt southwest of the Temple of Amun in the Siwa Oasis. Hey, my friend, you are making the worst mistake ever. You're saying they dwell southwest. It says here, Amun is occupied on the south and west by Ethiopians, not southwest. You're making that part up. It says south and west. I'm reading your own thing. And now you say southwest. Where'd you get that from? You make stuff up, bro. Oh my god, the desperation to make black people not black. In the land of the Ethiopians. In southwest, in the land of the Ethiopians. For good measure, we're going to read your quote again having settled the affairs of egypt alexander went off to the temple of amun the land which is sacred to god amun is occupied on the south and west by ethiopians say it with me on the south and west by ethiopians not southwest i mean if you're gonna try to remove something at least be honest like, how are we supposed to take you guys seriously when you're going to just make lies like this? Clearly means far south beyond the Sahara Desert and towards the west in the land of the Ethiopians. Okay, I'm going to need to take a little breather here. Okay, so where do you get the part that says far south? Where does it say that? They dwell far south and to the land of the west. Where do you get that from? It says it's it's right next to the Temple of Amun. At the Temple of Amun, they dwell to the south of it. Is the Temple of the Moon far south or is it south? What are we doing here? And I love the game that he's playing here, which is pick a spot on the map, any spot on the map, and then choose. So where the green starts, that's where he's talking about. What is that region called that you're putting south in and you're putting Ethiopians on the west right there? Why are you doing that? What what has he said that makes you believe that he says Ammonians are there? Come on, stop being a gamer. This is so lame. As shown on the map here, because according to Herodotus, the land directly south of the Siwa Oasis was uninhabited. First of all, what he actually said was, uh, no part of Libya appears to me so good in fertility as to be compared with Asia or Europe, except only the district of Sinops, for the land bears the same name as the river and is equal to the best land in the production of corn, nor is it at like the rest of Libya. For the soil is black and well watered with springs. 
Now, I, I want you guys to calculate something of what I just said. He said that there's this one region in Libya that has black soil and it's called Sinips, and it is in Libya. And then he also says there's no greenery in those regions. So does that sound like he's talking about sub-Saharan Africa after saying there's no greenery? Also, if he was talking about Egypt, wouldn't he say that there's also black soil in Egypt? Huh? Isn't it obvious that he's not talking about Egypt? He's talking about Libya straight. And he says that the whole Libyan area is like a desert area, which is true today. And that it's not comparable to other parts of the world. Except the one place where the Europeans have conquered, where there's a river, Sinops. Come on. And worst of all, this putting it southwest, first of all, that was made up because that was not real. That's not what it wrote. And then secondly, you chose an arbitrary spot and you put it all the way in sub-Saharan Africa because you want to throw Ethiopians away to the corner. Made up. Now, I want to state one more thing. It is, sure, Ammonians might have been in the Siwa region, but I see no evidence that he is talking about the Siwa region when he talks about Ammonians. So me accepting the places that you put is just me being charitable to you. I don't even accept that that area is where he puts the Ammonian. And now we know, just as the Egyptian Ammonians mixed with the Libyans and became Libyans, the Ammonians who migrated southwest settled amongst the Ethiopians, mixed with the Ethiopians and became Ethiopians. And now we know for a fact that North Libya or North Africa was inhabited by Libyans only. And South Libya, beyond the uninhabited desert in Sub-Sahara Africa, was inhabited by Ethiopians only. I mean, I hurt to burst your bubble. I hate to burst your bubble. But if we read another part of Herodotus, we can see when he calls his troops that there are Ethiopians who dwell in Arabia. For example, we can read here, it says, when they were going to battle, they smeared one half of their body with chalk and the other half with red ochre. The Arabians and Ethiopians who dwell above Egypt were commanded by Arsamis, son of Darius, and Artistone, daughter of Cyrus, whom Darius loved more than all his wives, and whose image he had made of beaten gold, the Ethiopians from the sunrise, for two kinds served in this expedition, were marshaled with the Indians, and did not at all differ from the others in appearance, but only in their language, and their hair for the eastern ethiopians are straight haired but those of libya have hair more curly than that of any other people these ethiopians from asia were accorded almost the same as the indians but they wore on their heads skins of horses heads as masks stripped off with the ears and mane. And this is the truth according to Herodotus. I arrest my case. I'm pretty sure it would be a good idea for you to arrest your case because it's very guilty. That's why it should be arrested. I rest my case on the other hand because my case is stronger than yours. Not arrest, but rest. So there it is. When the source is brought forth, the truth comes out. And when the source is present, the truth cannot be denied. And truth is, the ancient people of North Africa were Libyans. And the ancient people of Sub-Sahara Africa were Ethiopians. And the dishonest white racist pseudo-scholar and the dishonest Negro trader both want to hide and deny the fact that the ancient people of sub-Sahara Africa were Ethiopians. Why? 
because they know the true origins of who the Ethiopians really are. And the Ethiopians were the greatest people of the ancient world and were both the founders, ancestors, and descendants of Egyptian civilization. But now the jig is up. The truth has come out and we demand that African Americans and West Africans are acknowledged as rightful descendants of the ancient Ethiopians. And with that said, this is your brother, Pharaoh Mitzrahim, AKA Radio One, signing out saying, until next time, Egypt stays in Africa. Peace, Ma'at, Hotep, Amen Ra, and may you all have a wonderful day. Okay, this took a twist for the weirdest turn ever in history. Uh, first of all, Libyans aren't all white or whatever. But I don't understand how you go from Ethiopians only inhabit sub-Saharan Africa and then now they come from Egypt. I know what, what the theory you're trying to go for is, which is that Africans left Egypt and went down to sub-Saharan Africa. But you didn't have to go by this direction. There's other evidence that shows that Egyptians left and went to other parts of Africa. I'm actually confused because the whole video, it did not seem like he was on this direction. I completely uh, disagree with his assessment. It was pretty strange. And also for him to t turn around and say Libyans are North Africans. And now he's saying black Egyptians. But Egypt is not in sub-Saharan Africa. I'm confused. <laughs>